Okay, so for this video we're going to look at the um, steam supply and exhaust system coming from the uh, two and from the steam turbo generator. And so we're actually taking uh, 1725 kilopascal or 250 psi steam off of the main header down here. And uh, it goes through this control valve, our hand valve. We've got uh, in the back the uh, drain valve and the bypass warm-up valve exactly the same as the others that we looked at. It says on here that it's going to the Shinko turbine. So this is the steam that's going all the way up to the turbine. The turbine can could consume 6,800 kilograms an hour of steam. The maximum capacity on the on the Nebraska boiler if we really pushed it to its end. Um, and so this is a fairly good sized line. This is a, a large line going upstairs. So the next place we're going to do is we're going to go up on the uh, mezzanine floor right on top of the roof of the control room and I should take a look at this steam line. So it's just going up here and then goes towards the turbine lab. Okay, so now we're up on the roof, above the roof of the control room on the mezzanine floor. And following my laser, there is the steam line the 250 pound steam or 1725 kilopascal steam line coming along and right here is a venturi machine venturi tube which is actually measuring the steam flow to the turbine aside from wanting to know what that steam flow is this is actually used to feed forward index the plant master control on the boiler so at the moment that the turbine takes a sudden draw, immediately it changes the firing rate up. Or if the turbine was to trip, it will take and fire the firing rate off of the plant master down to almost, well, to minimum fire. And uh, that way you haven't got significant pressure swings and you're not lifting safety valves. So this steam flow is measuring up to 8,000 kilograms an hour, but the maximum will be 6,800. The steam flow then carries on from here. And you can see that it's supposed to say 1725. Um, and then the line comes to here. And at this point, there's an emergency shutoff valve. So we have an ESD valve so that if there was a sudden leak in that room, we can actually hit a mushroom button as we're evacuating and this valve will snap closed immediately. The steam then goes around, follows this line here and goes over into the turbine room. And the next step is to go to the turbine room. So the lines are basically up in there. Okay? Some of these are condensate coming back, other ones are uh, low pressure 150 pound steam going in there and then there's the main exhaust coming back and we'll go look first of all in the turbine room. So a moment ago I talked about the emergency shutdown valve and there is the button. So we're right near the exit going out of the room, okay? It says exit over here and that button, you simply push that button in and that valve will immediately close. It's uh, it actually has to be activated with air to open and it's spring return closed. So it's a fail-safe closed valve. Now the steam coming in at 1725 kilopascals is coming in right here. It's through the wall from the boiler room and goes up on that line there. And uh, here it is labeled properly at 1725. The steam flow comes along through here and then goes through the line here, and I'm going to try and show you. It goes into a separator. So those two block valves on our, are on either side of a steam separator. What the steam separator does is that as the steam comes in, if there's any wet steam or droplets in the steam, they will drop out into the bottom. And then if you come over to this side, right underneath the steam separator and that white line that's coming off there is the condensate and that condensate line will come across this way and it goes there and 
all the way to there and then down through these traps and then goes back to the condensate receiver which is down on the ground down there and then that pump will pump the condensate back to the steam plant. The steam after it has been dried comes out of there goes over a little bit and then drops down into the turbine room. So now we're going to go into the turbine room. Okay, so now we're in the turbine room, the, um, the Shinko turbine room. The steam comes down on this line here. There's a drip leg there and any condensate that forms goes through the trap, the little trap that's back there and then goes back as condensate to the condensate return system. The steam comes through two block valves um, to ensure that there's no steam leaking through. Um, we will open this one up initially and then we'll open this one up slowly as we go through the startup procedure. The steam comes along at 1725 and drops down through this line here. This steam goes to the turbine itself. So it comes into the turbine there's an emergency stop valve, the regulator, the throttling valve to control the speed of the turbine. The line sits dormant most of the time and as a result we will get rust built up in there and we don't want any of that rust to come off and end up in our turbine. So what we do is that we take the steam and we actually have another valve here and we can blast. That is that uh, during the startup of this turbine we actually blasted for 24 days trying to get all of the scale off the inside of the lines. Uh, when a weld is made, uh, when you see a welder working on a weld, they will use their chipping hammer and they will chip all the scale off the outside of the line. Well, what about the scale on the inside of the line? That's very hard to get rid of. And so what you do is you blast steam and then you shut it off and let it cool and then you blast again and the expansion contraction of the metal actually cracks that the uh, scale that's on there and then the scale gets blasted off and we we actually put uh, plates at the end of the line and once we the indentations got down to a very very small number and small indentations within a two inch square area it was then accepted that the line has been properly blasted and cleaned internally. Now, because of the way we operate and we leave this thing down so often, we're still going to get scale buildups in there just from water sitting in the line or condensate sitting in the line. So what we do is that we open up this valve slowly, very slowly, and we blast steam out of here and it comes out on this line here. There's a strainer sitting right there to take all those little bits of scale out. And then from there, it goes along. If I follow this line, we call it blast steam, okay? And then it goes up through the roof of this room, through the outside roof of the turbine room, and goes upstairs where we actually um, take and blast it through a, a pipe it would be extremely noisy. So what we did was we put a pulse code silencer on there and that silencer has reduced that down to basically a whisper. And in another video, you will actually see us going through and starting this uh, whole turbine up and we won't go up on the roof to look at it. There, it's gonna be in this clip right now what it physically looks like, but later we'll go outside the door and actually see it blasting and you'll, you'll hear it blasting. Okay, so that looks after getting steam in here. Now what happens to the exhaust side, the turbine, from this side, the turbine, we're putting steam into the governor and then it goes into the turbine itself and this turbine is what is called a back pressure turbine. Uh, when we originally designed the system we really would have liked a condensing turbine but uh, what we were supplied with was a back pressure turbine and so somewhere that steam has to go. Now in larger industrial plants, the exhaust steam off your turbines can be used for all kinds of process steam. Here, we don't have a process that's running. The exhaust steam is coming out and the design manufacturer, Shinko, 
set it up so that there would be 24 pounds of back pressure on the turbine. Um, and so uh, we don't actually run it at that. We run it at 15 pounds rather than, than, than 20 and then 34 pounds. Uh, and that gives us a little bit more output on the turbine itself. But you have to have some sort of back pressure on the turbine. It's designed for that and you can't run without it. You can't just run it to atmosphere or run it to a vacuum, which is what you would do if this was a condensing turbine. So the exhaust steam is gonna come up on this line here. You can see it's quite a large line. It's actually larger than the supply line because the steam in there is at 250 PSI and the steam inside this exhaust is only at 15 PSI, significantly expanded. So the line goes up over top of my head and then goes up through and we're gonna follow it outside this room. Okay, so the exhaust steam comes up on this line here. There's actually where my laser is pointing right now and I'm kind of wiggling it. There's a safety valve in there. And that safety valve is set for about 20 or 25 PSI. I can't remember which, I have to go look at the tag. At any rate, the, um, the exhaust steam, we're gonna control it at 103 because it's actually gonna go back into our 103 header. So that steam is coming along through this line here and then goes all the way down to there and then goes on that line there. So we're gonna go follow it. And the 103.5 is quickly coming along and then goes down and back. Now, for startup purposes, we're first warming the lines up. This is the 1725 coming in and there is a steam trap right where my laser is pointing. There's a drain valve there which goes to sewer. Because there's a lot of water in the lines to start with, we'll actually start with that drain valve open, just like we do with our headers. And then once we've got steam coming out of it, close it off and let the trap look at it. Same thing is gonna to apply to the 103 header. The, and there'll be condensate coming back, it'll be caught in that drip leg, and then it's gonna get drained out through this valve to the sewer. And then once we're sure that we've got steam coming through there, we'll shut this valve off and let the trap look after it. And all of that trapped condensate is going to come back into this condensate sump. And so the condensate from uh, the steam separator the condensate from the 103 header, the condensate from the 1725 line are all coming back into that sump. And then this float switch there controls this pump and then it pumps it back as condensate back to our condensate return system, which we've already seen previously. So the exhaust steam is coming back on this header, uh, this line right here, the strainer in there. Uh, on I'm going to go back, there's a takeoff right there, and we're measuring that exhaust pressure um, with this pressure transmitter right there. It's the only ABD transmitter in the system, and it's running foundation fuel bus. That one is used for controlling the back pressure uh, if we were trying to run at 34 PSI. Uh, we're not. Steam comes through here through this six inch whisper trim valve and heads back over to the 103 header. Now again, the manufacturer suggested 34 pound back pressure and this valve was going to be used to run it at 34 pound back pressure. But then we discovered that it was much easier to just let it exhaust directly into the 103 header and run it at 103 kPa or 15 PSI back pressure turbine works very well. However, we will be using this valve to warm up the turbine. So when we warm the turbine up, which is going to come on the next video, we actually warm it up from the 1725 side and we warm it up from the 103 side. So it's warmed up from the exhaust side and from the supply side. And that way it, it puts less stress on the turbine itself. So we're supposed to warm them using exhaust steam as well as supply steam. All right, in our 103 header here, there's a safety valve, very large safety valve because the steam is at very low pressure. Lots of volume to it. So, and this guy is set for about 20 PSI, and we're gonna be running this thing at 15 PSI. 
the exhaust from the Shinko turbine comes in on this line here into the header. Um, any steam um, uh, coming from the Carling turbine in the in the turbine lab, because there's actually two other turbines over there, um, comes back in this line here, or the back to the header, the exhaust, because it's also a back pressure. The other turbine, the, um, the little tiny, um, forgot the name of it, we'll figure that out later. Turbine is a uh, condenser turbine, and as a result, there is no steam coming back. Uh, the 150 pound header can supply this. So, to do that, we've got a three-way split. We're going to go and take a look at that. The way it's set up is that the output of the pressure control, or pressure controller, which is tied to that transmitter, is maintaining this header at 103 kPa. That controller output goes to three separate locations, which are set up one third, one third, one third. So it actually runs one valve for zero to 33 percent. It runs another valve for the low condenser from 33 to 66 percent. And then it runs a makeup valve coming from the 150 header right here um, from uh, 66 up to 100 percent. So this split three ways. And we're going to go through the PNID drawing and you'll be able to figure out how all that stuff works because it's some really neat stuff. Uh, two of them are reverse acting and one of them is is acting uh, direct acting. Um, so and it's actually this one here that's the direct acting. So 66 percent output on the controller to control this header. The valve is closed and you can't see it very well from here but I'm going to put my laser then we're going to look at it again. But the valve is where my laser is going. That's the top of the actuator on the valve itself. And it's kind of buried up in the ceiling. It's not exactly easy to see. But that valve, when your output of the controller is at 66%, that valve is full. When the output of the controller is at 100%, that valve is wide open. So, for every 1% output on the controller, that valve is moving 3%. Okay, so one wants to be fairly careful as to how you change that output. It actually works very well on automatic, but if you're manually doing it, you want to be very careful. And now we're going to go downstairs and take a look at the other two valves. So in a previous video, we went through and talked about the load condenser, which is this great big guy that's sitting back here. And we've got coolant going through this load condenser. And the coolant flow comes through a mag meter, which is my laser is right now. So this is propylene glycol coolant, goes through, down, into the heat exchanger, comes out of the heat exchanger, and then goes through a control valve. Now, when we're in non-STG or turbine mode, typically we control this valve to maintain the steam flow that's going through the load condenser. Now we want to change what it's doing. So in software, in the, in the computer, DCS system, we've actually taken and reversed the signal to that guy. So upstairs I talked about the makeup valve taking 150 pound steam, which actually comes from this header right here, goes up and goes out to the valve itself. The valve is back here, so we're going to wander back here and take a look at it. You get okay, so that's the control valve right there. You can see the body is insulated. The actuator is sitting up to the top. That valve is running so that at 66% output on the pressure controller on 2510. That valve is closed. And at 100% open, that valve is wide open. And it moves at 3% opening for each percent of signal coming from the from the ECF. So that looks after the top end of the split. The middle of the split is looked after by the coolant valve.
So the coolant valve is actually reversed. If you've got steam coming back from the shingle turbine into the header, you got to do something with it. And that steam is actually connected off of that header on this line right there. That line there is connected to that 103 header. And it goes over and comes down into the load condenser. It's G. What happens is that if you've got steam coming back, you have to open this valve to keep that pressure from climbing. Because when the steam comes back into the header, it's got to go somewhere. Otherwise, the pressure is going to rise. So as soon as the pressure rises, then what it's got to do is it needs to take this valve and open it up to cool more. Okay? Now, it's actually limited. We put a limit on there, even though it's running from 66 down to 33 and progressively opening that valve as that signal's dropping. That's why it's reversed. Okay? Um, we put a limit on there of 15. So it can't go any less than 15, because you've always got to have some steam going through that load condenser, always. Even if it's coming from the makeup pressure control. Uh, so you don't want this thing, it can't close right off. So that looks after basically the the shingle steam exhaust. So if you get more steam exhaust coming out of there, the pressure will rise, the signal from the controller will drop, at the same time reversed, it will take this valve and open it up to put more coolant through there to condense that steam that's coming through. And then the hot coolant will go up to the load condenser on the roof. If this was running in an industrial plant, that exhaust steam would be going into the process steam headers. You would be using it there. But here we had to get rid of the steam and we're not going to vent it. So we actually use the condenser to condense this. Okay, so the next thing we need to look at is that what happens if you don't have any steam coming back in there, but maybe that carling turbine that I looked at, or my feed water pump turbine, is exhausting back into that 103 header. Where do you put the steam now? Okay, so we've got a third part to that split, which is another valve which is actually running air to close. So 0 to 33 closes the valve off. So what will happen is that at 33% signal, the valve's closed. And at 0% output signal from the pressure controller, the valve is wide open. And it's going to exhaust that steam down to the blowdown separator in the basement. So let's go up back to the mezzanine floor and find that valve. So here is the 103 header. The steam actually goes through this valve when it's open to the load condenser. And then the load condenser is going to condense that steam. But what I said a few moments ago is that if, in fact, we just had steam coming back from the feed water pump turbine exhaust or steam coming back from the carling turbine in the thermal lab into this header, the pressure is going to rise and you're not using the load units. So when that pressure rises, the output signal moves from 33 down to zero. And what it does, it takes this line here through that valve there. And so this valve is air too close. So when the signal's up at 33, that valve's closed off. When the signal goes down to 16 and a half, that valve's half open. When the signal goes down to zero, that valve's wide open. When the steam comes through here, goes down to the blowdown separator in the basement, which we saw in a previous video. And in that blowdown separator, that steam goes in and it's just like the blowdown steam off the boilers, it's looked after. We actually cool it and then drop the water out and control the temperature of that water. Now, the condensate that's coming back from that turbine lab over here, the condensate is coming back on this line right here. And we've got a conductivity sensor sitting in that line tied to a conductivity blowdown controller. It's the connectivity of that water, that condensate, that is coming from that condensate receiver sump that was over there. You saw that all the condensates went, came together in the sump, it's been into the atmosphere, and then it's got a pump on it. When the float comes up and says a full level, then it takes and pumps it away. And this is where it goes. This guy says, if the connectivity is over 10 microsiemens, dump it. We don't want it. If it's nice, clean condensate, 
then we'll take it. And typically during startup, there, in the condensate lines, there's rust in there. And so you're going to get some productivity and it'll dump all that stuff. Then once that crud is out of there and the condensate gets clean, this guy will drop down and we'll accept the condensate. So the condensate drop in here, goes through these lines, this line here, and ends up going back into the condensate return header. And is dealt with in the hot well and the aerator, etc., etc., etc. Okay, that basically covers it.